with interest rates so low, uh, people have been uh, eager to try to achieve, shall I say, high returns in a low return world, which has led them to engage in pro-risk behavior. And that means that they're investing in lesser quality companies, their, their due diligence, their demand for margin of safety is not so strong, they're, they're making more generous assumptions, they're willing to live without uh, some of the um, protections that they enjoyed in the past. Uh, if these things are true, and I think they are, then that means we should be more defensive uh, than we ha than uh, on average. So, you know, we've had a mantra for a few years now, move forward, but with caution. Move forward, invest. We invest every day, we try to be fully invested, but when I say with caution, we are a cautious firm, so with caution means even more caution than usual, and I think that's appropriate today. Do you think that investors, you know, it's interesting because a number of investors, uh, fam some of them famed investors, have had to close their funds because they just had too hard a time investing in this environment. Uh, is what you're saying another way of saying that people have not yet become accustomed to what might be a new normal where return a safe return or a reasonable return on capital is not, you know, 10% or 8%, but maybe it's closer to 5%. Um, and because of that, they're taking risks that they would not take, let's say, in a future cycle if people were more uh, accustomed to this, and that that is what is making you defensive? Yes, that, that's, that's, that's a good part of it. I mean, if, if, let's use your example. It used to be that you could make 10 safely. Now you can only make five safely. People are doing things now to make eight in a 5% world. Because they don't that, realize they're in a 5% world. Well, Or they're in denial. I, I don't think they're in denial. I think that they need the money. <laughs> you, you look at the average U.S. pension fund or, or university endowment fund, they need about 75 or 8% to make the numbers work. They can't, you know, they can't say, well, in this environment, you can safely make five, we're gonna settle for five because then they'll consume their endowments. So they say, we need eight in a 5% world. So they take increased risk and they do things that they wouldn't have done when the safe return was 10 because they didn't need uh, the, to take risky actions. Uh, and I think that that is one of the things Pro-risk behavior, the pursuit of high returns in a low-return world, is one of the things that I think compels some degree of caution today. I'm not saying to get out of the market. I'm not saying to not be in the market. You know, somebody on one of the TV shows said last year, Mark says it's time to get out. And I said to him, there's only two things I would never say. One is get out, and two is it's time. You know, I'm never that sure. Uh, and I'm certainly not that sure today, but I would moderate my aggressiveness today. And, you know, investors face two main risks. Every investor faces two main risks, whether they're aware of it or not. The main risk, and everybody knows it, is the risk of losing money. But the second risk, which is a little more subtle, is the risk of missing opportunities. And at any point in time, we have to say, which of the two risks should I be worried about more today? You can't, you can, you can prevent either one. If you say to me, Howard, I want to invest, uh, but I don't want to lose any money, I want to be absolutely sure, then I say, okay, we put you all into treasuries, T-bills. Can't lose any money, but you miss all the opportunities. And if you say, Howard, I want to be 100% sure that I don't miss any opportunities, then I say, okay, no T-bills for you. And then your whole portfolio is exposed to the, to the risk of permanent loss. Mm. So you can prevent one risk or the other risk, but avoiding that risk puts you firmly uh, exposed to the other. Or you can compromise, or, but you can favor one over the other. What should be, think about yourself, your age, your financial situation, your aspirations, uh, what your job pays, how many kids you have, um, uh, your psyche. You should have, every listener should have an idea, even if it's only subjective and qualitative, 
of what their normal risk posture should be based on the things I enumerated. That's question number one. Question number two is, where should we be today relative to your normal risk posture? Hmm. And I would say that I would somewhat favor defense. So we are fully invested at Oak Tree, but our portfolio embodies a strong insistence on defense. When the market goes up, that means you don't go up quite as much. I think that's the right posture for today, uh, given the description that I gave you.